Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to another Battle of it. Now it's between the Mate 30 Pro and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. This one's a little different because we're going to look at some, some features of devices that most people aren't covering. Yes, we'll get a look at the camera, but let's talk about things that are uh, are unique to both devices. I'm going to start off with reverse wireless charging. These are the only two devices that support it. Uh, and you know, the iPhone we thought was going to, but it doesn't. But Huawei this year says theirs is now three times faster than what they had last year. Meaning, of course, you're looking at 50, uh, you're looking at 7.5 watts versus the 4.5 of the Galaxy. How well does it perform? Let's take a look. So when it comes to reverse wireless charging, Huawei says the new reverse wireless charger is three times faster than what they had. So which means it's now at 7.5 watts, while the Galaxy Note 10 Plus is 4.5 watts. So let's see what it does in 30 minutes. Say, you know, you just need to get a quick charge while you're chatting with a friend and you place your devices on. We've got two pixels from zero and checking in at 10 minutes, we've got 5% here on the uh, Huawei Mate 30 Pro and on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, we're looking at 1%. So in 10 minutes, you're already at 5% charge. So if you need juice, this is actually pretty cool. Now, the devices here are both Pixel 3, so we wanna use the same device, and both of them are at started at 0%, and we'll see where it goes. So checking in at 20 minutes, uh, we've got 4% here on the Galaxy Note 10 and uh, on the uh, Huawei it's about 10%. Okay, so 10%. Uh, that's cool. Now we're going to move on and we'll check in at 30 minutes. So 7.5 watt charging, that's pretty cool. It means it's as fast and wireless, reverse wireless charging as the iPhone. <laughs> that is just something quite interesting. So check it in at the 30 minute mark. What do we get for charge time to our devices? Well, the Huawei gave us 15% charge time, 30 minutes at 7.5 watts, while the Galaxy gave us 8% in 30 minutes at 8 at 4.5 watts. So clearly the Huawei does a better job at reverse wireless charging devices. And also in terms of battery usage, you can see the Galaxy here is at 87% from 100. This is where I started. And the Huawei is at 83% uh, from 100. So take it as you will, but that's just to give you an idea of what reverse wireless charging can do on the Huawei Mate 30 Pro and how it's improved. So that is quite impressive. Um, it means that the Huawei reverse wirelessly charges devices like a smartphone at the same rate your iPhone, if you have one, or an iPhone charges wirelessly charges. That's impressive, that is really good. Now Huawei also has a brand new wireless charging speed at 27 watts. Uh, the Galaxy is at 15 watts. Now I couldn't actually give you a proper test here because I don't have a 27 watt charger, but um, it does charge faster than any device and I will definitely do a proper test for you guys once that comes up. But for now, Huawei claims at 27 watts and I mean, you know what? It's gonna win that battle. Now its battery sizes are different. You've got 4,500 milliamps for the Huawei and you've got 4,300 milliamps for the Galaxy. Both of them have, of course, different chargers. Huawei has a 40 watt charger. The Galaxy has a 25 watt charger. In the end, the charging speeds are around the same. If you look at it, the Galaxy is at an hour, five minutes with the 25 watts, while the Huawei is at an hour, three minutes. So it's pretty close. Uh, if you use the 45 watt charger on the Galaxy, you will go under 60 minutes. Some people have done 55. I have done 60 minutes on that. So again, but you're spending extra money. Now let's move over to the camera. I know you guys want to see that. Uh, they both have, uh, of course, unique camera setups. So Galaxy has a triple camera setup with three lenses, 60 megapixel ultra wide, while the Huawei has a four, two 40 megapixel pixel sensors. One, of course, is the ultra wide. It's got a cine lens for better cinematics. And yes, let's see if Huawei has improved their video because one of the big things they didn't do well last year. Let's take a look. Let's go. Thank you. 
Steady cameras and smartphones is always great to see. And the Galaxy, I think, still holds the crown here. It was much steadier as I ran and I jumped and jumped around the obstacle course, so to speak. The Huawei was not bad. You can still see the image well, but it swayed a lot. So I think the Galaxy definitely wins here. The one thing the Huawei device has that the Galaxy just can't do is slow-mo at roughly 7,680 frames per second. What you're looking at is 1,120 frames per second or 32x as it says on the camera and it's absolutely just lovely that you can do this on a smartphone so this is one thing that the Huawei can do that the Galaxy and no other smartphone could do right now at this point in time now let's go ahead and take a look at 4k 60 video from both devices with some stabilization So when looking at both videos, the Huawei has better stabilization uh, over the Galaxy. Now the Galaxy is good, but just the micro stabilization, you can see the Galaxy jump a little bit here and there. The color profile is more natural on the Galaxy. The Huawei is a little bit punchier here, and it's also a little bit wider. It's using that you know cine lens, that 40 megapixel, so it's a wider lens uh, uh, that it's using here, which is nice. Uh, I, I, I absolutely love it. Now, in terms of audio, the Galaxy, I think, has better audio because you don't hear a lot of the ceiling fan, which is that, that buzzing sound, but both are still really good. So looking at daytime images, apologize for using two different aspect ratios here, but the thing you notice is the Huawei is a little bit more contrasty than the Galaxy. Now, both of them still have a close to correct representation of the sky moon and i think both images are are pretty solid especially just looking at the subject here justin my trainer who you saw earlier uh but it gives a accurate color representation of uh of the individual now when we go to a portrait mode here you can see that huawei adds a little bit more of a color hue to justin and samsung gets a little bit more pale even though um you know both still are not accurate to what his skin color is now i do like the bokeh effect on the huawei all the way through the galaxy is just on the top hand side top part of the image so basically closer towards uh his head now on the wide angle shot here the huawei has a better light representation over the galaxy the galaxy does capture more scenes because this has the wider wide angle ultra wide angle lens so it looks a little bit more stylish but the huawei still gives me i think just a better representation of what that scene is yes it is a dull day i chose to shoot on this day because i wanted to see how it would, be, it would differ from you know days with you know a lot of bright sunlight and shininess but still of course it's in daylight now now moving on to low light photos before we go ahead here's a shot of the scene we'll be looking at and this is the shot without any ai functionality any night mode just letting you know how dark it is you really can't see the bottom of the building now we go when we go ahead and compare images from both devices they do a really good job of bringing the images out the huawei basically lights up almost everything you can see more of the fence uh while the galaxy the fence is not as bright the lower half is not as bright as the top half the huawei colors are actually a more accurate color representation of what it looks like in daylight or as opposed um, of the building as opposed to the galaxy uh, but it's still two really solid images now this is the ultra wide angle lens uh, the Huawei uh, you can see more detail with the Huawei and less on the galaxy so that's something just to take note uh, again it was really dark so I didn't expect it to do too well but it did well enough uh, the Huawei has turned the sky into a little popular purplish haze so to speak uh the galaxy is green and dark kind of just letting you know it's dark so i would say the huawei does still a better job here now this shot here is one where the galaxy does a better job in representing this whole image uh this is across the street shooting from a low light environment into uh some i'll say 
dimly lit environment. You can see the galaxy captures more and shows at least more detail, especially more light in the back where the truck is in the far left. Uh, and also at the corner where there's a light source in the other building brings up the, uh, brings that up more. The wild whistle does a good job, but not as bright and also doesn't light up the wall, that, uh, uh, that brownish orange wall behind. So again, this is where the, the galaxy with some light aid will do a better job in low light situations, uh, but not as much. And you can see the Huawei still does a really solid job all around. Well, it looks like Huawei has stepped up their game. Their video quality is much better. Mic is better. Samsung still has super steady on lock, but I like what Huawei is doing. I think overall that camera is very impressive. Let me know what you think when it comes to cameras with these devices here. Now, in terms of performance, you're looking at both devices that have top of the tier processors, seven nanometers. The Galaxy is the 855 from Qualcomm. Huawei has their own inbuilt chip called the Kirin 990. Now, we, we tested and we did gameplay on both devices. You can go check out our gaming videos here. Huawei does a good job. Now, now just give you a disclaimer, PUBG is not fully optimized yet, so we don't know how it will handle with full optimization, but check out that video just to see what it does in terms of what we can do right now. While the Galaxy itself does a really good job with the A55, and we know what it does there, but I do have a video for you again. So when you're talking about gaming, you're also talking about audio. What do you get for audio for both systems? They both have stereo speakers, the Galaxy also has Dolby Atmos, while we have stereo speakers, uh, but you know what, let's read those decibels and let's fire on and see. So Huawei is louder. I do kind of like the sound quality of the Galaxy a little bit better. And I think that Huawei has still improved quite a bit from what they had last year. Less tinny sound, more volume to it. And uh, overall, it's just pretty solid. Now, when you look at both devices side by side, it is, it's hard to not be impressed by what Huawei has done. This device has a stellar camera setup. Uh, it does a really good job, but it also has some really cool features like reverse wireless charging, which is the fastest. Wireless charging, which is also the fastest as well. Um, and then we've got a bigger battery and it's got one of the best battery management in the Android ecosystem there. Now it doesn't have, of course, Google services built in. You can sideload it. There's a lot of videos out there for you to actually check out and see. Uh, in terms of this battle vid, I am leaning towards the Huawei device though. I mean, like it's a solid device. It's got some great performance there. The Galaxy is really well balanced. Now, the one thing that Huawei just can't do is the Galaxy has an S Pen. And the S Pen does so much more. Of course, the remote features, a writing on screen, all that fun stuff. So again, that is something that separates it from here. But I'm gonna ask you guys, what do you think? Which device do you think is different or better? Which would you pick? Which would you use? Just, you know, besides the Google services issue. Let me know what you think and let me know what you think who won this video. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like and share, subscribe to the channel and always enjoy your entertainment.